Today's video is a video I promised to make a while back in a video I did on 1Password. I previously created a video showing how to use 1Password on the desktop, and in that video I actually mentioned that I would do a follow-up video showing how to use 1Password on a phone. Well, it's been a few months, maybe just a bit longer than a few months, but today I'm gonna to finally make that video and show you how to use 1Password on a mobile device. I will be demonstrating on my iPhone. I've been told Android 1Password works fairly well, but honestly, all the password managers, whether you use LastPass, 1Password, Dashlane, uh, Bitwarden, all of them work fairly similar. Obviously, some minor differences. The best way I always explain, especially when you're using like Windows and Mac and things like that, is a lot of times it's like getting in a new car. It has all the same controls for the most part. Maybe each brand has a few of its own types of controls, but it still has a steering wheel, it still has the pedals, still has the heating, the cooling, the radio, but maybe the buttons are just in little different places and you just got to kind of figure out where those are. That's kind of the same way with all this stuff. Whether you're on Android or Apple, it's got all the same features as far as how one password will work it just might you might have to look around in some different spots for it so without further ado let's jump in right over to my phone so once you're in on the phone you can go right into the app store and you can look up one password and once you install it you can then open it up And you'll see it uses Face ID on my phone to log in. You can also set it up to use Touch ID or a passcode. When I get to the security settings, I will actually walk through and explain all the different options that you can actually do. But your main screen, this is what you'll see when you log in. It shows you kind of a list of all your items. And you can see I have 462 items. I have 410 logins, 34 notes, a credit card, a couple identities, and a few other things uh, added in here. So you can put all sorts of information in here and store it and you can get to it on your phone and as I said the nice thing about this is it syncs between all of your devices that is the essential piece that's really really nice so if I update something on my phone and go over to my desktop it'll be synced over to that I have this installed on four or five computers and a I think two tablets and my phone and it works flawlessly so it's really really handy the one thing you do want to do once you get logged in and have everything set up no matter what, the first thing you need to do is you need to go into your settings. Because when you're in your browser and you're going to log in on a site or log in on an app, the phone by default, especially on iOS, will default to the keychain passwords. And you need to tell the phone that you want it to use your 1Password. And again, this works for all the different apps. So no matter if you're using 1Password, LastPass, Dashlane, Bitwarden, any of those, you do need to make sure you do this. So you want to open up your settings and you're going to scroll down to passwords and then you're going to see this autofill passwords option you want to tap on that and it's going to show you a list of all your different password managers that you have so once you install one password and get logged in you want to jump over here and you're going to see iCloud keychain and one password listed if you're again if you're using Dashlane or LastPass or any of those other ones you'll see those listed there you want to make sure autofill passwords is checked so you want to make sure the green slider is over and then you want to make sure one password is selected and iCloud keychain is unselected you can use both but I found it's an extra step so when you're trying to log in on an app and it opens up it It'll give you the choice and what you want to use and then you can finally get into your password if you just use one password it'll default right over to that which makes it really nice and handy so once you do those changes that's kind of the first step you want to make sure it's an easy one to overlook and I believe when you first log in it does give you that kind of information to say hey make sure you go over there into your settings and take care of that change so let's hop back into one password Occasionally, I will mention up front, I, I don't know what the setting is, and I think you can customize that setting, but every now and then it is going to require you to put in your master password. So you want to make sure you do that. I know a lot of times when I'm in an app or trying to log into an app, and when the login pops up in one password, it'll have me actually put in my master password. If you're finding that happens, just open the app on your phone. Go ahead and log in and you can bounce back over and it will auto sign you in and take care of those things. 
So again, in here's your list of all your different stuff. I'm not gonna worry about going through and showing that because it's gonna save all your logins, your passwords, just like it did on the desktop. So if you tap on favorites, it'll show you a list of everything you've set as your favorites. You can assign tags to different things so you have a little bit more granularity in how you organize things. I don't really use tags personally. I find just being able to search for the item and off you go, that works just fine. The last piece and the main part is the settings. So under accounts, that's your account information. Under general, you can change your app icon. You can have it light or dark. You can have the rich icons where it'll show different things for different odds and ends that you have in there. You can have it included in your spotlight search if you want. Uh, and you can have how many recently used items show up when you do those things. So not a ton of settings under there. Under vaults, it'll show you a list of all the vaults that you're a part of, whether you've created them or they've been shared with you. And you can select what vault opens by default. So I have it set for all my vaults to automatically open. Under security, this is the one where you can really control things and how it works. So the first one is you can lock it now. So if you come in here and you want the password to be acquired next time you open it, you can hit lock now and then it's an instantaneous lock. You can have it lock on exit. You can set the default for auto lock time. You can choose if it uses face ID. If you don't have face ID on your device, you can, uh, it'll be touch ID that'll allow it to be used. Watchtower, again, that just keeps an eye out for vulnerabilities. You can have it clear the clipboard, so when you're copying and pasting things, and if it'll conceal the passwords as you paste them. You can also allow the universal clipboard. This is a really nice feature. Actually, I'm going to turn that on because I didn't realize that was a setting there I could turn on. Universal clipboard is if you have multiple iOS devices. It's one of my more favorite features on all the Apple devices. If I copy something on my phone and go over to my MacBook and hit paste, it'll actually paste what I copied from my iPhone. And this works among all Apple devices. You could be on your MacBook, hit copy. As long as you're logged in on all those devices, with your Apple ID. It's all based on your Apple ID. So as long as you're logged in on all your devices with that, you can copy and paste from one device to the next. So you can copy an image or a paragraph of text, a password or a username, and paste it from one device to another, which is really, really nice. Bounce back out of settings or security. Then you got the password autofill where you can just kind of choose some of those settings underneath there, up to you on those. Now, it does have a built-in 1Password browser. It's up to you if you want to use it, meaning if you tap on a site directly from your 1Password, it'll open up in its own specialty browser. I prefer not to do that. I just have it open up in my default browser, which for me is Firefox. A brand new feature in Safari on iOS is they have much tighter integration with 1Password, so it'll actually work more like what it does on your uh, on your laptop where it actually shows up within the login box instead of you tapping on it and then going down to the thing and hitting passwords and then that showing up. So it's a little tighter integration. It only works right now in Safari. Hopefully other apps will be adding that feature in. If you have an Apple Watch, you can have it on your Apple Watch so you can view certain things on that. Again, you can choose how the notifications show up for you. You get some help. And then under advanced, you can do some imports and allow some custom things, or you can erase all your data. So it just gives you some basic options within all your settings, which is really, really nice. Overall, that's all there is to the password manager. So now let's see how this works when you actually go to a website. So I'm going to open up my Firefox browser. And this is not the best site for mobile devices, but I'm going to tap login. Now I'm going to tap on the username box and you're going to see the little password shows up just above the keyboard. If I tap passwords, it's going to use the face ID and you'll see the link right there shows up. Now, every now and then when you tap on passwords, sometimes mobile sites or different websites use a little different login link than what the actual site address is. So nothing will actually show up here. You can tap on the search and you can actually search for it manually. I know some of the sites I use, especially credit cards and some uh, financial sites, you know, the link for the login portion is different from the main link. Like our my bank, for example. 
the actual website address is not the same as the login to get into your account so you can actually view all your balances and all that stuff. But in one password, in my previous video, I show you how you can add all those alternate sites so that it can cover all that. But if it doesn't show up, you can just tap on search all vaults. You can search for Trumpet Herald in this case and it will show right up. But if I tap on Trumpet Herald, it will autofill everything in and I can just tap log in and I'm in. I will open up Safari briefly, just so you can see kind of that difference in how it works there. I'm going to again go to Trumpet Herald. Again, I'm going to do the login so you can just see how it looks a little different here. So you'll see now down at the bottom, it actually pops up with use my login. And if you see kind of in the, the username box, there's a little one password icon right there, like you would see on your actual desktop. So if I hit that automatically, it's going to use my user or my face ID and log me right in. So it just kind of streamlines it a little bit more. I really don't notice a huge difference. I mean, maybe a couple seconds difference to actually log in. But that's how 1Password works on your mobile device. It doesn't matter if you're using your iPhone or using an iPad. As I said, Android, I have not personally used it on any Android devices, but when I did use uh, LastPass on there, it worked pretty much the same. I know for a while 1Password didn't work as well on Android. Supposedly it's gotten better. I don't know for sure. Please, if you do use 1Password on an Android device, take a moment and leave a comment below. I'd be curious to know how that interaction works. So if anybody does use Android and 1Password doesn't work too well, I'm not suggesting it to them. I really don't want to suggest an app that doesn't work very well. So I know LastPass does work really well on Android. So hopefully 1Password works because I'm a big fan of that. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. I know a lot of people have really been happy with how to use a password manager as I mentioned in the previous video it can be a little bit of a daunting task and sometimes a little intimidating so just kind of walking through it slowly and just slowly working your way into it is the best way to do it because once you get into the system it's really so much nicer so again I hope you found this tutorial helpful if you have any questions comments suggestions please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and if you really did enjoy this video please take a moment and hit that subscribe button below and while you're over there just next to it go ahead and hit that bell icon so you can stay up to date with all my latest video tutorials otherwise this is Adam on tech signing off